Clorettes, the new chlorophyll chewing gum that makes breath kissing sweet, presents Rocky King, Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Chief of Homicide of a Metropolitan Police Force in an exciting adventure in crime. Tonight's story, The Hermit's Cat. is a vacation if you gotta come home and start worrying about bills again. Oh, stop mumbling. What'd you get it for if you didn't expect to take care of it? I didn't say anything. No, that's just it. You haven't said anything pleasant since you came home from the office today. <laughs> What's the matter? Didn't they have the police band there to greet you? No, they didn't. Nobody threw any ticker tape either. Oh, well, they didn't expect you until tomorrow. Did you see anybody at all? No, oh, just Vladdy. He wants to go back to work on the inside. Oh, I thought he was tired of that job. Well, he changed his mind after missing a couple of ball games. Anyway, that's where I want him. Oh. Oh, yes, that's Mrs. Murphy. They have those beauty parlors where I'll be in at 9 o'clock. <laughs> My hair's a mess after all that mountain air. Does, what's the matter with it? Spec King's residence. Well, hello, Commissioner. Yes, sir, we had a wonderful time. Well, I was going to call you tomorrow. What, sir? Oh, yes, that vacation spot you suggested just out of this world. Oh, it certainly is. It took us 16 hours to find it. Be quiet, man. Yeah, what, sir? I, I didn't understand you. No, 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 I didn't have any trouble at all. It just seemed to bite on anything at all. I guess the biggest one I caught was about 22 pounds. Oh, why are you talking about the fish you didn't catch? Uh, just a minute, Commissioner. I got a bad connection. Mabel, will you go talk to Junior? Maybe he'll appreciate your comedy. Oh, well, at least he'll be a little more pleasant. He hasn't got a care in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Commissioner. I got it fixed. Do I know who? Enos Dayton? That eccentric millionaire lives out in River Falls? Yes, I know him by reputation, and that's not too good, you know. Now, what happened to him? Killed on a highway. Well, that's a little strange, Commissioner. According to all the stories, the old gentleman never went out of his house. Maybe I better go out and take a look at it. All right, sir, I'll do it right away, and I'll call you tomorrow. I got to run, Mabel. Oh, well, wait a minute. I want to ask you a question for Junior. Well, is that so? Well, let him talk for himself. Well, he's afraid to after the faces you've been making, so I'll speak for him. What do you want, son? He wants to go up to the clubhouse for a while and show the boys what poison oak looks like. All right, go ahead. And now be careful, Junior. Don't let them touch it. And if you tell them about the vacation, don't say your father didn't catch any fish. He's real sensitive about it. You know, sometimes you can say the cutest things. Hello, Inspect King. Oh, this is Lane, sir. I'm sorry I didn't catch you at the office. I wasn't due in to 6 o'clock. That's all right, Lane. Where are you now? I'm at the home of Enos Dayton, Inspector. It's that big estate just this side of River Falls. The old gentleman's been killed. Yes, I, I, I know all about it. What's the best way to get there? Well, you just take the west side drive, sir. It shouldn't take you any more than 30 minutes. Have you got full squads with you? Yeah, Doc and everybody's out here. Yeah, how'd you get the call? The uh, State Highway Patrol put it in, sir. One of their men standing by now? Yes, sir. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Oh, you're just like an old fire horse with a bell ring. You think you'll be long? Well, I don't know, Mabel. I haven't been out there yet. Anyway, you better go to bed. Oh, all right. I need a good sleep anyway. I want to be downtown early tomorrow. There's a big sale on. I can get some school things for Junior. Well, just take it easy. we got enough of them here. Oh, and you take it easy, too, and don't drive too fast. I don't want you to have an accident so soon after your vacation. Well, I don't want to have an accident at any time. What kind of reasoning is that? Well, for heaven's sake, don't be so touchy. Then don't say such silly things. You're always trying to tell me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And goodbye, Mabel. You're late, Miss Dayton. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Oh, you might call this gravel in my shoe, Doc, but I think I got rocks in it. I got this fella good. Is uh, the inspector coming out? I uh, should be here in a couple of minutes. Well, that might be his car coming now. You know, the boys are shutting all other cars down off onto the other road. Yeah. What do you think it was, an accident? I don't know. 
Got tire marks all over his shirt, ugly cut in his head. He could have gotten those anyway, whether it was an accident or not. Just park it right here, you Hagen. Better leave those lights on, too. Hey, Inspector, over this way, sir. Uh, my goodness, how are you? It's good to see well, you well, back. Good to Bless see you. you. You know, I didn't think anybody cared at all. That office like a morgue today. I understand you've been doing a pretty good job while well, I go. Well, I tried, sir. Now, that's all you can do. How are you, Doc? Oh, about the same. Have a nice trip, Inspector. Oh, yeah, just, just wonderful, that's all. You know, this fellow here was quite a character. Nobody seems to know anything about him at all. Anybody see it happen? No, nobody that I know, sir. Well, how do highway patrol get it? Well, some guy called, uh... Alan J. Hargrove put call in, sir. He's an insurance salesman. I've got his address here. Well, the highway patrol looked over his car. There's no signs that the car hit anybody, so they let this Mr. Hargrove go on home to dinner. Is that the house? That's it. Talk to people inside? Yeah, there are only two of them there, sir. Mr. Dayton's gardener, a fellow named Norton, and uh, his lawyer, a man named White. They're in there now. Mm -hmm. How long has the lawyer been here? Well, not very long, sir. I guess Norton must have called him a few seconds after I arrived. Did he uh, come on a car? No, he must have walked. He lives right close by. Mm hmm. Hey, what's the matter? Anything wrong? Yes, yeah, sir. No skid marks. So? You know, the first thing in the world you think about doing is putting on your brakes whether you intended to stop or not. You've got the same idea I have, Inspector. Have you looked all over the grounds? No, I ain't waited until you got here, sir. All right, you better do that right now. I'll look inside and talk to people there. Okay, Inspector. Doc, you can take him away as soon as you're satisfied. Right. Put that magazine away, Norton. Yes, sir. You know... Oh, uh, good evening, gentlemen. I'm Inspector King, Police Department. I kind of like to clear up this accident now. Let me see. Uh, your name is White? That's right, sir. You must uh, be Norton, the gardener. Uh, where were you at the time it happened? I don't know what time it happened. Well, all right. Uh, where were you all evening? I was up in my room reading until uh, Mr. White here came to call for Mr. Dayton at 8.30. I uh, went down... And I came right back up again. Ah, uh -huh. do you keep the window open in your room? No. I, uh, like to read these and sometimes I get scared. What are they? Oh, detective magazines, huh? Glad you can find out a lot from these here. They sure kill people funny ways, don't they? Well, that depends on your sense of humor. <laughs> yes, they do. Why'd you come here tonight, Mr. White? Well, Norton phoned me about the accident, sir. I live just down the road. I came over to see if I could help. Uh, I called them. When the police told me that Mr. Dayton was dead, I didn't know what to do next. I see. Uh, you see, Inspector King, I'm not only the family lawyer, but I'm also, or was also, one of Mr. Dayton's closest friends. It's perfectly natural for Norton to call me. Well, I didn't say it wasn't. I've been coming here once a week for years, Inspector. Mr. Dayton was a recluse. He, he refused to go out of doors. And how do you account for his being out tonight? Frankly, I can't. I left him here in the parlor. Well, then you were here earlier this yes, evening? Yes, yes, yes. We had some business to discuss, and then I left. Mm -hmm. I got it! Yes, you got what? I know why he went out. He went out to get Cleo. Cleo? Who's Cleo? You know who she is, don't you? No, I haven't had that pleasure. She's his cat. Mr. Dayton loved her. He was afraid she might catch cold. Afraid she'd catch cold out of... Um, just read this again. We'll just sit right down. Yes, sir. Here? Oh, yes, anywhere you want to. It doesn't make any difference. You um, said that you were the uh, family, family lawyer, Mr. White. Is there a family? Uh, yes and no, Inspector. There's only his daughter, Mildred. Uh, they didn't speak for for years. They hated each other. Well, that's a pretty strong word. Have you seen her lately? Yes, I see her frequently. She works in a nightclub. Here. Here's an old photo. I've tried very hard to bring about a reconciliation. No success, huh? No. Oh. I, uh, I managed to convince Mr. Dayton that such a condition shouldn't exist, but the daughter wouldn't have any part of it. Is she, um, singer? No, no, just a hat check girl. What's the name of the nightclub where the, she was? Uh, the Green Lantern. Yeah. It's, uh... Find anything, Lang? Yeah, I found something out in the garage. I think you should take a look at it, sir. All right, I'll be right out. What was the cause of the breakup between them? Well, it was really Mildred's fault. Dayton gave her an adequate allowance, but she had the idea she should get her share of the family fortune while her father was still alive. You see, the money came from her grandfather. Uh -huh. So it was a business quarrel, is that what you said? You said they hated each other. You know there's a difference. Was there any other reason? Well, perhaps the word hate was too strong. But all I know is that father and daughter didn't speak for two whole years. Well, that's too bad. Lots of families like that. Norton, did Dayton ever talk to you about his daughter? He never talked to me at all. He always yelled. All right, just, just sit down and read that thing again. I won't try it anymore. Why, uh, why all the questions, Inspector? This is an accident case. You're treating it like... Like, a... I like what, Mr. White? A murder? Oh, yes. Well, maybe it is. 
afraid I'm going to have to talk to you again, so I'm going to ask you to wait here. Take a look at these tire tracks, sir. They're yeah, small, aren't they? Yeah. Looks like they were made by a foreign car of some kind. Offhand, I'd say it was a um, Simca or something like that. Simca? Yeah. Well, that's just the point, Inspector. I've looked all over here and I can't find the car. And these tracks were freshly made. All right, then there's something wrong. We got car tracks in the garage, but no skid marks where the body was found. Did you see that cut on his head? It wasn't any cut, sir. It was a pretty serious wound. All right, then let's see if we can't find out what he was hit with. Yeah? Oh. What? Come here, take a look at this. What is it? Oh, that must be Cleo. Who? Cleo, his cat. Norton said that he could have come out to bring her in. You know, she catches cold when she's out alone at night. What? That's what he said. You think she could have been run over by the car? I don't know. We're going to find out. Take that cat down to the lab. Bring it in. Get the squad in here, make a cast these tire marks, then we'll call them night. You want to leave a couple of boys over at the house? I don't think it'll be necessary, Lane. You know there's a girl involved in this, the daughter of um, Mildred Dayton, I think it is. She works in a nightclub called the Green Lantern. Here's her picture, just possible. One of these men might have bought a visitor tonight. I'll put Thompson on that right away, though. Well, okay, sir. Another thing, I think this guy White could bear a little investigating, too. Well, we can't investigate him at this time of night, so we'll get a fresh start in the morning. I'd also like to find out just how Mr. Dayton's will reads. It's going to be a tough job, too, because White's the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Thompson can handle it. All right, clean up in here. Okay, then you go home, and uh, don't forget Cleo. Hey, Tom, get right up over here, will you? Why did you have to say anything about her? As his lawyer, I've got to give whatever information I know. I ought to... Yes, you want. You want to what, uh, Norton? Nothing. Say, um, what about the car? Car? What car? Mr. Dayton's, the one he kept in the garage. He never had no car. Why do you ask that, Inspector? Well, I saw the garage open. I assumed he had one, that's all. Well, it's about 12 o'clock. It's late, White. I'll drive you on home. And, um... Norton, if I were you, I wouldn't read any more tonight. You've had enough excitement for one day. Yes, I know. Oh, well, Mike. had to, Miss Mildred. You won't give me your address, and, and I think you should protect yourself. I tell you, I don't care what White told the police. He made it look bad for them. He told them you hated your father. I did. It's no secret, and it's no crime. There you go. Johnny. Johnny, did you tell the police anything? No, no. Honest, I didn't. Don't get mad, Miss Mildred. I like you. I'd do anything for you. Anything. I know, I know. Then get back to the house. Keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. Sure. Anything you say. All right, hold it just a few minutes, will you, Lane? You know, I've been reading Thompson's report here. Let me tell you something. This fellow Norton went to the Green Lantern nightclub to visit her last night. Thompson also got a copy of her father's will. Here, take what, a look at what? it. Oh, I don't know how to understand how that Thompson does it. He just gets up early, that's all. 
expect King on the side. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Mabel. What in the world are you calling me so early for? To tell you I'm alive principally, although I never look the same. Well, what are you talking about? It's that big sale at the department store. There must have been 3,000 of us girls out front with the doors open. And did you get stepped on? Oh, yes, several times. But it was worth it. I got what I wanted. All right, then you can hang up now. Goodbye, dear. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I want to ask you something. There were a couple of things I want to buy. Uh, first of all, I want to get that clown picture out of the den. Mm -hmm. I don't think it matches your personality all of the time. Well, it does sometimes, huh? <laughs> yes. And another thing, they're having a sale on beautiful raincoats for twelve ninety eight. Mm -hmm. That one you're wearing's all shot to pieces. Well, it suits me, so don't get any. All right, Mr. King. Wear that nightgown until it falls off of you. Disgrace your family in the honorable profession you represent. I've spoken my last word. Sometimes she can be so and so. Let me see my raincoat, Lane. You gonna get a new one? No, I don't don't think so. This is perfectly all right, isn't it? I'll, I'll just so simply right. have it relined. That's all. Send that Miss uh, Miss Dayton in. Okay. She talked to me about it anyway. I come in, please, Miss Dayton. Good morning, good morning, Miss uh, Dayton. Sit down, won't you? May I ask why it's been brought? Here? Yes, yes. I want to talk to you before the inquest. Now, first of all, what kind of a car do you drive? A convertible. Cadillac. Cadillac, huh? Well, that's nice, nice car indeed. As I understand it, you haven't spoken to your father for over two years, because you quarreled about money. We always quarreled about money. That's what my father lived for. Money was his creed, his religion. It made him weak-minded. I like money for what it can buy. Uh, things like a convertible Cadillac? Well, now that he's dead, you probably have a fortune to spend. I suppose so. I'm an only child. My father was worth about 20 million. Is this what you brought me here for, Inspector? No, not exactly. Suppose I were to tell you that you're not to get one cent of your father's will. That's impossible. No, I don't think it is. He left everything to a Mr. Um, Mr. Mark White. You're mistaken, Inspector. I saw the will myself two years ago. I was his sole heir. He must have made a new one. Here's a photostatic copy of the will that he drew just three months ago, his last will and testament. You care to look at it? No, thank you. Let me tell you something, Inspector. Mr. White won't get away with it. That is perfectly legal. He's his lawyer. Inspector King, homicide. Oh, yes, Joe. What? Oh, the tire, huh? All right, I'll send Lane right down. Now I get that cast of those tire oh, tacks out there. Did you work last night? Yes. Why did Norton come to see you? Oh, you've had me watched. That doesn't exactly answer my question. He came to tell me about my father's death. He's been with the family a long time. And he would do nearly anything you asked him, wouldn't he? Well, he isn't the brightest person in the world, so I wouldn't ask him very much. Look, Inspector, I have things to do. With. This is getting us no place. If you don't mind, I think I'll leave. Sure, go right ahead. I'll undoubtedly see you at the coroner's inquest. You undoubtedly will. Goodbye, Inspector. Let me see that, Layman, please. Would you? Come on, hurry it up. Well, I have said it was from a Fiat, sir, but that's an Italian car, all right. Yeah, I wasn't far wrong, was it's I? Not huh? too far. And the marks on Dayton shirt those tire tracks match this. Yeah? Always find anything else? A jack handle with some of Dayton's hair on it. Well, Mr. Dayton was murdered. Sure he was. But where? On the road or in the garage? Well, my guess is the garage, and he was carried out the road to make it look like an accident. What about the cat? Cat? Oh, well, uh, she didn't have any tire marks on her at all. She was hit on the head. And the same person killed them both, huh? Sure, but who? Well, obviously one of three persons. Possibly the girl. Mm -hmm. She thought she was his sole heir. Yeah. She said she drives a Cadillac, but she could have got a hold of some way a small car. Mm -hmm. But what about whites? Well, he had a motive, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Will was changed in his favor, and there's Norton. He's nutty enough to do the job for someone he liked. I'm sure he liked the girl. Oh, but could Norton get himself a driver's license? That's exactly what we're going to find out, Lane. You do that while I check at the Hall of Records. Come on, we'll stop at the corners first. Right, sir. Add another one, Johnny. Sure. What are you going to do with that thing? Nothing. Nothing, Johnny, nothing. Just looking at it. Now, go on with what you were saying. I told you everything. I was up in my room reading. The reason I didn't tell the police that I was fired by Mr. Dayton was because it would make it look bad. And the very day he fired you, he died. Stop it, will you? 
My head hurts. You're trying to mix me up again. No, no, Norton. I want to help you. Now, who took care of you when you stole that money? You did. Now, I think I can help you now, but you've got to tell the truth. You may have done it, but somebody may have made you do it. Sometimes I don't remember too uh -huh. well. I... Now, you could have driven the car from the garage out to the driveway. Mr. Dayton could have come out looking for the cat. You didn't see him. It was an accident. Is that what happened? No, I... You I... got panicky, Johnny. You got panicky and dragged the body out to the road, then back the car into the driveway. Now, I'll take care of you, Johnny. I can You've got to give it to me in writing. It's the only way. Sure. I'll write what comes into my head. <laughs> but keep away from me, will you? Right. Keep away. All right, John. Go ahead and write. Maybe I should be near you, Miss Mildred. No, wait in your room. What is that? None of your business. Oh, yes, it is. So you changed my father's will. You finally managed it. After all these years, you got what you wanted. It was your father's idea, not mine. My father's been mentally incompetent for a long time. But you handled him very well. Do you remember the time you convinced him that we should get married? Again, it was his idea. Well, it doesn't make any difference whose idea it was. This time, I'll say yes. Really? Well, I don't need you now. Two years ago, it was different. I thought it was the only way. Why, you rotten... I'll drag you through everything. Well, what's all the excitement about? Somebody must have found out who killed Mr. Dayton. Well, I have now, what I want to find out is who had the idea to make it look like a hit and run. I've got something that'll give you the idea, Inspector. Here, read this. It'll give you all the information you need. Signed, John Norton. Huh? You're not going to accept an incompetence confession, are you, Inspector? I will if I can find out whose car he drove. It was mine. Oh, that is my law partner's. I borrowed it for the evening. Was the fifth? Yes. Norton drove it into the garage for me when I was here earlier. You saw him drive the car? Yes, I did. Read this, Lane. Sure. Last night I was taking Mr. White's car out of the garage. While I drove it from the garage to the road, I hit somebody in the dark. I got scared and put the car back in the garage and went to see who I hit. It was Mr. Dayton. I got scared and dragged the body to the road. When I got back to the garage, I saw I run over the cat. I was scared, so I went up to my room. Is that how it happened, Norton? Yes, sir. I think you're lying. I think somebody scared you into writing this. First place, cat wasn't run over. He was hit on the head. And Mr. White, I don't think you saw Norton drive the car in the garage because I don't think he knows how to drive a car. At least he hasn't got a license. You know how to drive a car, Norton. Remember, I'll make you prove it. No, I can't oh, drive. Why are you right, stupid? Just a minute. Let me tell you what I think happened. I know that you needed money badly. You worked on the old man to get him to change his will. Yes, he's been trying to do that for two years. I'm sure of that, miss. But your father became suspicious. He knew something was wrong. And when he left the room, you thought he was going for help. You followed him out the garage. You picked up a jack handle, hit him over the head, then drove the car over his body. The cat made a noise of some kind. You were afraid it would attract some attention. So you killed her. You're very smart. <laughs> White, I think that's all the confession I need. Take him in, Lane. All right, sir. Come on, White, let's go. Hey, give me a hand with this guy. One thing I don't understand, Norton. You hated that man there. 
Why did you do everything he asked? Why did you sign and write this confession? I can tell you why. My father discovered that Johnny had stolen some money from him. And White knew it, huh? Yes. Johnny was foolish enough to borrow from White to repay father. He should have let me do it. I didn't want to get you in any trouble, Miss Mildred. Well, it's obvious you don't want to prosecute. You know, Miss Dayton, I, I don't exactly know what the trouble was between your father, but I think it was more than money. I've heard about his reputation. However, if you get yourself a good lawyer, I'm sure that you'll get your fortune. If you do, just do me one favor, will you? Get Johnny a five-year subscription for the best detective magazine. Goodbye, Inspector. Bye, Miss Dayton. So long, Johnny. Case closed and I'm coming home. What, dear? Yes, yes, we got him. Did you buy anything at the store? Uh-huh, what? Oh, a new picture. Well, what's it like? Sherlock Holmes is a boy. Mabel, I don't want anything like that around. Now, if I don't like it, I'll take it back. Yes, dear, I'll be right home. Wonderful girl, that Mabel. Original music composed and played by Jack Warren. Tune in again next week for another exciting adventure of Rocky King Detective, starring Roscoe Carnes as Rocky King. Rocky King Detective is brought to you by Clorette, the new chlorophyll chewing gum that makes breath kissing sweet.